So I'm right in Spaniards Bay right now. I'm in Newfoundland and I can finally go and do some crazy stuff. So right now I'm doing the crow's nest hike and I'm gonna go right, right up to there. And I simply can't deny it that I feel adventure calling out to me. Yeah, we are all looking for adventure. I had an amazing trip to the east coast of Canada and I've already released a video on my PEI portion of the trip so I'll leave a link in the description for you guys but this video is about Newfoundland and my amazing experiences that I had there so let's get back to it. Oh. Well that's where the actual crow's nest is but we're even higher up which is good. And I'm living free, living free, living free, and I was meant to be living free, living free, living free. So quick update on my situation. I'm currently staying with my grandmother in Spaniards Bay, and tomorrow I'm gonna go with my aunt to Grand Falls, which is central Newfoundland, about a four-hour drive, so some really exciting stuff. I'm right at what's this place called? Salmon Cove and uh, what a beautiful view we have. I just got into my aunt's place and I met my aunt's cat for the first time and he is the sweetest thing ever. Hi Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next day and I had a really good night's sleep in Grand Falls, so right now I'm about to do the Sanger Memorial Trail in Grand Falls. And it's a cool trail that goes along the Exploits River, so let's go. So we're in this underground room in the Salmon Interpretation Center and there's a big window where we can see all sorts of salmon moving upstream and it's really neat. And this goes straight outside, so they're just doing their regular thing. They're not trapped in an enclosure or anything. So one of the cool things that I learned about the Exploits River is that back in the 80s, the salmon population there was really low. But since then, they installed fish ladders and the population has gone up big time. And they also did a lot of focus on cleaning up the environment around the area. And I can see a couple of really cool examples of nature reclaiming the land. Behind me is an old rusty car. And that is because this trail right here used to be right near an incinerator and basically a landfill. So there's still a rusty old car right here, which is super neat, but I've never seen anything like this before. We're almost done the trail. We're gonna turn back around and go back. But so far this trail was amazing. And this is just a neat little thing. Well, the hike's over. It was a pretty short hike. It was a lot of fun though. And I guess it's time to say goodbye to Grand Falls. So the next stop on my trip was Gross Morn National Park. I am just doing a hiking trail up to the Tablelands and I'm still in Grossmore National Park, but it is a super foggy, rainy, gross day. We're still doing the hiking trail and I'm still vlogging. The weather's not gonna stop me. But the Tablelands are supposed to be really beautiful and it's an area where the Earth's mantle is actually showing. So it's some pretty neat stuff. This is one of the oldest rock formations in the world. So let's keep going, try to get to the Tablelands before it rains us out.
We're heading up. It's starting to get windy. We're at the top. It's really windy. I have to put the camera away so we can get down. It's starting to become a safety hazard. But we made it to the top. West Coast, it's gorgeous. So my trip to Newfoundland started in the East Coast, so St. John, Spaniards Bay area, then I went to Central Newfoundland, which was Grand Falls, and then the West Coast, which was Grossmorn, and then eventually I had to go all the way back to the East Coast, where I spent the last couple of days of my trip. Way out there is Mad Rock, and I took my hat off because it's really windy, and the wind is actually blowing outwards, so there isn't that many waves crashing onto Mad Rock, which is a bit of a shame, but at least there's a really nice hiking trail, so we're gonna go do that now, but oh my goodness, it's so windy. <laughs> North America there's a lighthouse right behind me and then the sea in front of me and this sea goes all the way to Europe and especially where we are right now it goes straight to England so let me give you a view in St. John's checking out Cape Spear, I had to go and see Signal Hill. And Signal Hill has like almost a little castle on top called Cabot Tower. And it was used as a lookout to defend and fortify the harbor of St. John's because St. John's is like a natural harbor. There's a really narrow entrance that opens up into a big bay. And the, uh, the Cabot Tower was used to spot oncoming enemy ships that were trying to get into the harbor. And it was used as recently as World War II, where they actually expanded on the fortifications and added even more and more powerful guns. So the reason that Signal Hill is so important is because it's the very first place where a transatlantic a wireless communication happens. So it's actually a pretty neat place. We're gonna see if we can go up to the top, but it's gonna be pretty cool. I'm on top of Cabot Tower. Look at this view. That is downtown St. John's, which is the oldest city in North America, which is pretty crazy. And it's not actually that big of a city, but it's beautiful and it's super old and holds a lot of historic value. The city of St. John's has very unique and rich history, even though it suffered from several major fires in the past. And the largest and most recent of these fires was the Great Fire of 1892, which completely decimated a large chunk of the city. But a lot of the stone structures still remained, and the city was built back up around that. So even though a bunch of fires have destroyed the city in the past, it still maintains a lot of character and charm. Three and a half hours till the flight leaves. We're just leaving the place right now. I had a great time on the east coast of Canada, but the real adventure of my trip was that I got to fly back home all alone. And sure, I had people drop me off at the airport and pick me up on the other end, but I went through security and I found my gate and actually flew alone. 
and it was a little bit scary, but by the time I got back home, I had this sense of accomplishment. I'm up to the bottom. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Perfect. Stay on the escalator, first one on the left at the bottom. Hi. Yeah. So it really didn't take long. Uh, only had to wait for a couple minutes. Oh, there we are. About to get onto the plane, just about to board. Oh, it's a tiny little plane. That's cool. Uh, we stopped in Halifax. Uh, it's like 30 minute break. Don't even have to get out of the plane. And then heading to Ottawa. The flight went pretty smoothly. Uh, a little bit of turbulence wasn't bad. So, almost home. So, so close. See ya. See ya. Take my glasses off for that. Yep. We'll investigate in this one. Yeah, hold on. Back up. Three, two, one. Come on, side. <laughs> I can't get this shot.